What does Halacha and Hasidus say about vegetarianism? I'm going to begin with a very interesting episode. There's a Yid, who was one of the most Choshva Rabbanim in Eretz Yisrael, who published his own autobiography a number of years ago. And he is a vegetarian. And he makes reference to the Chida and some other G'deli Yisrael also opposed people eating meat and they were vegetarians. He visited the Rebbe in Yechidis and raised the question of vegetarianism to the Rebbe. And in his biography, he describes what the Rebbe told him. But there's a bit of a problem. Problem is that this Yechidis happened in 1962. And when he came out of the Rebbe's room, as was traditional in those days, the Bachram circled him and asked him what conversations they had with the Rebbe. And he told the Rebbe about his conversation about vegetarianism, and they wrote down then what he told them. And in his book, he writes something quite different. And uh, frankly, I incline to believe what the Bachrim wrote for the simple reason, first of all, they wrote it at the time, and second of all, they didn't have a, a bias. And according to the Bachrim's account of what the Rebbe told him, the Rebbe said to him, vegetarianism is something for Yechid Gula. The notion of being uh, not meat eater within the framework of Yiddishkeit and quoting G'day Yisrael and G'day Yisrael that spoke about not eating meat is something for individuals. But the idea that Jewish people should not eat meat is not part of our religion. It's not part of our religious paradigm. And I'm going to explain to you how I understand this. Vegetarianism has a variety of different bases. One, of course, is health. And if a person's vegetarianism has to do with health, I don't think this crosses over any lines when it comes to Teir and Alocha or even Ashkafa Zayadas. It's a question of medicine. Doctors tell you how you have to be healthy. There's no requirement to eat meat. It's, it's Mahudah to eat meat and Shabbos and Yom Tif. But uh, Mashiach will come, have to bring a carbon Pesach, he'll have to eat a Gazayas of flesh. But you're not mechuyiv to eat meat in the absolute sense of the word. In other words, you can explain that if a doctor says it's not good for you to eat meat, so that becomes your unique Shabbos and your Simchas Yom Tev and so on. But there's also vegetarianism on moral grounds, on ethical grounds, about cruelty to animals. And in cruelty to animals itself, there's two levels. The first is that the practices in the slaughterhouses are cruel. In other words, that then the shlachtai are actually are abusive to the animals. And there's no doubt that Teda does not support that. Teda is not indifferent to the pain of animals. This is, this is, there's the Gemaris about Rabbein HaKadosh and so on, where they talk very seriously about the halachas of Tzar Balechayim, including when you're killing animals. That when you kill one animal, the other animals shouldn't hear that the first animal is being killed, so they shouldn't be frightened and so on. There's no justification in Teda for uh, being cruel to animals and saying it doesn't make a difference. So that also has a place. But then there is also the argument of cruelty to animals that you're not allowed to kill animals altogether. As if animals have the same rights as people. And this is a very, very big movement and it's a radical movement and it's a militant movement and it's an extreme movement that says when a human being kills an animal it's no different than a human being killing another human being. This uh, becomes a religious question. And I'll tell you why. I'll give you a maise, a sipur, which is brought in Sfarim, and I think it's a true story, that somebody was a relative of the Rebbe Rashab, of the previous Rebbe's father, and he was a vegetarian. And he came to Lubavitch to argue vegetarianism on the grounds of ethical treatment of animals. So the Rebbe Rashab said, and when you bite into a piece of lettuce, because you don't hear the lettuce crying out, that's okay. And um, the point that the Rebbe Rashab was making, every living thing, when you, kill, when you eat it, you kill it, and when you kill it, it hurts. And there is evidence that just like animals, the same is true with fish, and the same is even true with plants. They respond, they experience pain. Clearly, it's a different concept of pain, it's a different level of pain, it's a different level of neurological responses. I guess you could translate that if you chose to, it's not as painful, they're not as sensitive, whatever, however you want to explain it, uh, studying the chemicals and the reactions and so on and so forth. 
But the idea that you're not allowed to kill animals because animals experience pain, and you're allowed to cut down tomatoes because tomatoes don't experience pain is simply untrue. So of course you're going to counter and say, but you got to eat some things. You have to eat fruits and you have to eat. So you'd rather off, rather eat fruits and vegetables rather than eating meat. And this is where it becomes mamish a religious question, and I'll tell you why. What's right and what's wrong? What's true and what's false? And how can you prove it? How can you prove it? Any person who studies the history of humankind sees the pendulum swing again and again. In the world we live in right now, killing animals and eating meat is seen as a bad thing. It wasn't very long ago that hunting, hunting, which is real cruelty, uh, was considered sport by the same people who today are so against killing animals. And in a hundred years from today, it's very likely that it'll be back in vogue. Meaning to say that the society, the culture, and the way it responds to right and wrong is constantly changing, constantly evolving. Right now, the world believes that this is moral, this is immoral, this is ethical, this is unethical. And there's people who stand on soapboxes and scream, and they'll call you evil if you kill an animal and eat meat, even if you do it in a humane way, because they think that it's wrong. 50 years ago, the people who were in their category didn't think so. It's very possible that in 50 years from today, they're going to think differently than they think now. But right now, this is the moral high ground, as they call it, so they run around and scream, and they feel very self-righteous, and so on. What's right and what's wrong? And of course, there is a secular argument to the effect that there's no such thing as a right and a wrong. It's all subjective. It's a matter of opinion. And people lobby. Right? The world in which we live is people trying to convince people that what they think is right is right and they should buy onto it. And there's so much pressure that exists in the media and in social circles to get people to accept certain practices as moral and other practices as immoral, certain ways of life as acceptable and other ways of life as unacceptable and so on. And of course, one of the areas of this entire ongoing debate is the question of eating meat. And there's a lot of people who say that any kind of killing of animals, even if it's humane, is cruel. And it's not enough that they don't want to eat meat. You're not allowed to eat meat. And if you don't agree with them, then you're a bad person. Are they right or are they wrong? Of course, they think they're right. They, want, they think they're so right that if you don't agree with them, you're a bad person. You have to agree with them and so on. But on what grounds? On what, on what basis? And of course the answer is, because this is what they think. Now something may happen, it doesn't matter what, but something may happen, and they may change their mind. In 10 years, in 20 years, in 50 years, and then the, the morality changes. And the history of the world is a series of ebbs and flows about all of these kinds of questions. Enter into this debate, Teda Sashem, the Teda. What is the Teda? The Torah is the wisdom of God, period. The Torah is the Chochmah of Hashem. And of course, if you've learned Hasidus, you understand it says in the Zayah that the Torah is the blueprint of creation. The creation radiates from the Torah. And the Torah says, I am going to teach you what's right and what's wrong based on the designer of the creation. And of course, one of the beautiful things about the Torah is that it does not change. Morality doesn't change. What's considered cruel today was considered cruel 100 years ago and will be considered cruel 100 years from now. It's not going to change. Because the Torah gives criteria, absolute laws. And when Torah says that something is immoral, it was always immoral. And when Torah says something is moral, it always was moral. And one of the issues that the Torah talks about killing animals and eating meat and of course, you all know that the Chumash says that when Adam and Chava were created, they were told that eating meat of animals was considered murder, at least according to Rashi. Killing an animal was the same as killing a person. And it was only after the Mabal that Hashem was matanech to eat meat. After the flood, Hashem permitted people to eat meat. However, it's explained in a lot of different explanations. The bottom line is the Tatus says you're, you're allowed to eat meat. 
So now comes a theological question. You don't have to eat meat. You don't have to eat meat. You don't have to eat meat because you don't consider it healthy. But to not eat meat because you think it's cruel means you're saying that Hashem is wrong. And that's a theological, it's a religious question. The Torah says you're allowed to kill and eat meat. In no way does the Torah permit killing meat animals in a cruel way. But the Torah says that there's a humane way to kill animals and you're allowed to eat meat. Now, who's to decide what's right and what's wrong? That's the point. Nobody knows. Except for Hashem. In other words, when human beings engage in this debate, it's, it's been going on forever, and it keeps swinging back and forth. Today, everybody's 100% sure that this is right and this is wrong. It was different 100 years ago, and it will no likely be different than 100 years from today. So how right is the tr right of today? But when the Torah says, you're allowed to eat meat, the Torah is saying this isn't cruel. And if you decide it's cruel, you're deciding that God is cruel. And that's a deep theological issue. So if a person wants to be a vegetarian because they want to do a scafia, a person wants to be a vegetarian because of matters of health, a person wants to be a vegetarian because they want to be a glutton, those are acceptable reasons. But if a person wants to be a vegetarian because killing meat is considered cruel, he is now touching a faith issue. And what is that faith issue? I believe in perfect faith that God gave us this Torah and God knows what's right and wrong and He knows what's right and wrong in an unchanging way. This is not acceptable. This is not part of our uh, Jewish paradigm. You can't be a relieving religious Jew and consider killing animals cruel. Why? Because Hashem said it isn't. Now we're not talking about killing them in a cruel way. That's a different question. Because Taylor says you're not allowed to be cruel to animals. But if you're killing animals in a humane way, it's not only permitted, it's defined by Taylor as, a, uh, as the basis, as, as part of the framework of an unchanging set of rules of ethics, of morality. And if a person questions that, he's questioning God. He's questioning what we call the Shleishe Esrei Ikri Hemunah, the 13 principles of faith, which say that the Torah comes from Hashem, and a Torah is true, and the Torah is unchanging, and Hashem isn't cruel. Hashem is Emes, and Hashem is Chesed. And this is where vegetarianism becomes a very sensitive issue. And like I said earlier, there is a lot of subjectivity to it. Because you're not responding to the pain that an animal experiences, you're responding to the pain that you experience that the animal experiences. Vaharaya, you don't feel the same way about a crab as you feel about a cow. And you don't feel the same way about a fish as you feel about a cow. And you certainly don't feel the same way about lettuce and celery and tomatoes as you feel about a cow. And the difference is really how much you relate to that organism's pain and not the pain itself. Mm -hmm.